Today we are kicking off a live summer school week and today's lesson is all about how to take great photos on your smartphone. <laughs> From U.S. Editor in Chief of Tech Radar, Lance Yulinoff. Lance, hi. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to be back. You know, I have to say, it's the first time I've met Mark in person, but I know something about Mark. He can't take photos. No. He's got a very yeah, uh, I, I have, hard time taking photos. I have, I have heard this. So that's really what we're going to talk about is using your smartphone to take much better photos. Great. And the, first, the first tip is so simple. It's about composition. Mm. Compose your photos. So you're taking a picture of Kelly, right? And you're like, Kelly's beautiful. Yes, but what's behind Kelly's head? A giant fern. OK, so you have to think about everything that's in the frame and make sure it makes a complete and beautiful picture. You're, you're going to see it all through. Everything you look at through your camera, through your phone, that's what's going to be there. Not just <laughs> Kelly dead center, but all the other stuff. Okay. You're giving him a lot of credit there because typically the top <laughs> of my head and most of my face is cut off. Composition <laughs> does include in making sure your the, subject the is subject in, in the, the middle, frame. Right. Yes. So these are, by the way, really powerful phones, and you have to learn how to control them. And you know, so one of the things I like to do is take pictures of flowers. Okay. But if you're oh. trying to take a picture of the flower, you turn on what's called macro mode, but your phone just goes back and forth and back and forth. But under settings, you can turn it off. You can turn it on so you have control. Okay. So when I get close to that paper, you see the little flower in the corner? You see that little flower? All right, so if I turn that off, that's how I control it. But the reason you have that is so you have control of what you oh, do. So you that really, little flower. That little so flower really in the lower. Yes, in that's focus. your. That is your macro control. But you have to go into settings to to, to turn on the control for you. So we go into settings yes. for that. I feel like we've gotten a good start here, but what I want to do is I want to go to the park. We're not going to Central Park. We're going to a little park over here. And Mark, I'm going to show you how to take amazing photos of yes. Kelly. Okay. We're going over right now. So right here. Let's go oh, right over there. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> All right, Mark, you're going to get the. You're actually going to get this. Okay. 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 Lance, so, are you and I on the park bench? You are going to stand. Why don't you just stand right here, like right here? Right here. Okay. That's good. Okay. okay, so first thing, wait, stop for a second. Okay, so immediately I see Mark is starting to do it the wrong way. Yes. Uh -oh. Okay, so Mark is turned sideways, and it's not about you taking a photo of yourself, you're taking a photo of Kelly. Okay. So what you want to do is photographer's stance. You spread your legs out a little bit, okay? Just so, because that makes you steady. You get your elbows close to your body so you are not doing this. Like, okay? how's that? That's actually pretty good. Now okay. you start to frame her up, right? Take a picture, go ahead, please take a picture. All right, we're going to do something interesting, though. I want to do what I call the trendsetter shot, OK? okay? This ultra-wide photo uh -huh. camera, turn the camera upside okay. down. You're going to hold the camera for a second. Kelly, you're going to be a little bit like this, OK? With one foot out, so turn toward him. You're going to get lower, make sure her toes are in the picture, tilt up, take a picture. OK, now flip it over, and you can see it. So, Whoa. see how dramatic that is? It's called a trendsetter shot. Really easy to do. Uh, we have to take a break. We're going to have more helpful hints from Lance when we come back. Stick around. <laughs> We're back with U.S. Editor in Chief of Tech Radar, Lance Ulanoff, and he's giving Mark a lesson on how to take the perfect photo using our smartphones. We can all agree that Mark has broken Lance. <laughs> 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 Exhibit A. Uh, what are some other ways to optimize the camera on our smartphone? All right, I'm going to. Because I don't think people are really getting. Like, I like the flower thing. All that was of cool. their stuff out of it. All right, so. Yeah. Oh, look at I'm how so, cute you are. I am so sorry. You're but, adorable. <laughs> So I, I love portrait mode photography. Um, what makes it really beautiful is that your subject is sharp and the background is blurred. But what you notice is that's not a great looking shot. What's the difference between this and this? I stepped forward about five feet. Get your background away from your subject. That's how bokeh works. That's what's called the bokeh effect. That's how por portrait mode works best. And by the way, you can adjust the portrait effect. So you want more blurriness in the background. Well, you don't want, if the tree is right behind your head, it's not going to be out of focus or very much. So it's not going to have that same effect. Got so it. Really Okay. Want to do that. Fun little tip Ooh. for your panel. If you're going out and you're shooting yeah. the New York City skyline, you can use panoramic mode, flip the phone sideways, go slowly up until you hit the top of the building, and you get you get something like this. And it's just, yeah. Oh, this is time lapse. So this is really cool. I just stood in Grand Central for about two minutes holding the phone still. 
and it does all the work. By the way, I've used this time lapse, which is on all of your phones for capturing projects. My home renovation project is all on there. You know, you can do clouds, which are beautiful. Oh, wow. I mean, really, again, dramatic. Whoa. Speaking of dramatic, what's if that? You want, that's just some leaves with water on it. So you can add a little bit of excitement <laughs> and drama. No, I mean, I know what that is. I mean, what setting is that, Lance? <laughs> Well, I should just, I should probably just leave now. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. <laughs> so, add a little water, or sometimes after you've watered, run out and take pictures of the, the roses. Beautiful, because they bend the light, they add that excitement, mm -hmm. and your camera phone is obviously capable of doing it. This is kind of interesting. So uh, that was the moon, right? Yeah. It, on this our, is how. Yeah, look. This is how the real moon looks. This is my tip for you. You have super zoom on your phones. Don't use it because it creates a fake image. It is not. This is the photograph of the moon taken at maximum optical resolution. That's what you want. Everything else is AI influence and will not actually be reality. Huh. By and the way, so, and so when you take a picture like that, then you can you can enlarge the photograph. Enlarge, you'll enlarge it, and you'll get what you get. You won't get something that is because you basically it's just not real, and we want right. real. Right. That's great. <laughs> These are great uh, tips, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank it. you, Lance. I need some more time with you. Definitely need some more time with you. Lance, thank you very much. Yeah. For more tips like this, head to live with KellyandMark.com. And coming up next, we'll open up the inbox.